Right, so Keir Starmer being a deceitful, lying charlatan who will do or say anything to get into power, it's not a message regular viewers of this channel need reminding of. But nothing has been turning people off him and Labour generally faster than his conduct regarding Israel and Palestine, Israel and Gaza particularly, especially since the events of October 7th. Starmer said Israel had the right to commit war crimes, collective punishment, and has never apologised for it. He's continued to support the arming of Israel, saying it has a right to defend itself. Even now, five months on, as the Gaza Strip has been raised from north to south, he's opposed ceasefires to the fury of members and elected representatives of the Labour Party, overseeing scores of resignations and even faces allegations of having threatened the Speaker of the House of Commons if they didn't allow a Labour amendment on an SNP opposition day, which ended up using the cover of Islamophobia of alleged terrorist threats who he knew nothing of before and have not been followed up on since to all appearances to excuse itself. So deciding at the start of Ramadan, the Muslim holy month, without a much hoped for ceasefire being put in place ahead of it beginning, to put out a message of best wishes to Muslims from Keir Starmer has gone down as badly as it deserved to. Right, so of all the people to send out a tweet wishing Muslim communities well right now, the last person many of them will want to hear that from is Keir Starmer, as has certainly been the case since this aired. I'm very clear Israel must have that, does have that right to defend herself, um, and Hamas bears responsibility. A siege is appropriate? Cutting off power? Cutting off water? Well, I think that Israel does have that right it is an ongoing situation um, obviously everything should be done within international law but i don't want to step away from the sort of core principles that israel has a right to defend herself and hamas bears responsibility for these terrorist acts and i would call on all responsible states particularly middle east um, responsible states to call this out for what it is um, and to stand with the world in condemning, utterly condemning, these actions by Hamas. That video deserves to haunt Starmer for the rest of his days. It heralded a collapse in Muslim support for Labour that has now fallen to half of what it was under Jeremy Corbyn. And to this day, Starmer has not apologised for saying what he did. Instead, he has just denied he ever said it. Denied he ever said Israel has the right to withdraw food and water from Gaza as an occupying force. Denied saying he supported collective punishment. His knowledge of international humanitarian law, despite being a former human rights lawyer, clearly sorely lacking. Worse than his words on this matter, though, awful as they are, have been his actions, though. They do speak louder than words, after all. Starmer has refused to back a ceasefire time after time, backing only humanitarian pauses so that Israel could go right back to bombing Gaza after dropping some aid in. He lost 10 front benches last November when he whipped to abstain on the SNP amendment calling for a permanent ceasefire. He was set to lose more last month when the SNP brought a motion on the same issue again, permanent ceasefire, facing a rebellion within the Labour ranks not seen since the days of the Iraq war, as the SNP used an opposition day to bring a permanent ceasefire motion which with the government also tabling an amendment meant Labour's, by convention, should never have been heard. Yet somehow, Starmer lent on the weakling speaker, Lindsay Hoyle, convincing him somehow, the allegation being a threat to his position and future support to return as speaker after the general election, to coerce him into setting aside the relevant standing, despite no vote being taken on it. That's how crooked Starmer is in opposition, so wait and see how bad he is in power if you're daft enough to vote for him. But also it shows how determinedly he is to not shift his position as far as supporting Israel goes. He has disgusted so many people in this country, not least members of his own party, who have gone in droves. And Labour's attitude to that is they are shaking off fleas. Fleas they still want to vote from come the general election, of course. Well, I hope they all flee a long way from Labour and take those votes elsewhere. It's not just been members, though. It's been elected representatives, too, up and down the country, from Newham to Oxford, Burnley, Stroud, Manchester and more, actually losing control of some of these councils due to this pro-Israel Zionist without qualification position Starmer has. And still, he will not budge an inch over. 
The latest of these has been in Lambeth, following suspension for daring to vote through a ceasefire motion that Labour now officially support, since their SNP undermining amendment managed to pass in the Commons. A councillor literally suspended for supporting that ceasefire, which is also Labour's party position, exposing as fact that the amendment carries no actual weight for Starmer and was there purely just to take the legs out from under the SNP. The resignation letter from Councillor Sonia Winifred from the Labour Party is utterly damning, reading, Taking the decision to resign my seat as Labour Councillor for Knights Hill Ward was one of the most difficult decisions I have had to make. I have lived in Lambeth since 1965. Arriving in this country to join my parents, who as members of the Windross generation came to establish a better life. Throughout my career, I have served the community in Lambeth. My career began as a community librarian in Lambeth Libraries, and in May 2014, I was elected Labour Councillor for Knights Hill Ward, one of the proudest moments of my life. I have continued to work, live and serve this wonderfully diverse community through listening on the doorstep, regular canvassing, carrying out monthly surgeries. For 10 years, I have served with enthusiasm and commitment, never becoming complacent, never forgetting I was elected by the community to serve the community, to listen and speak on their behalf, ensuring their voices are heard loud and clear in the council chamber. This is exactly what I did on Wednesday the 24th of January by voting for the motion calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza-Israel conflict, bringing an end to the hostilities. During my six-hour trial, I was questioned on collective responsibility, whether I had considered the impact of my voting for the motion on my fellow councillors. My response was clear. I have every respect for my fellow councillors. However, collective responsibility does not begin and end in the Labour group room. It extends beyond to my constituents and the wider community, those who elected me to speak on their behalf. This is not how I imagined ending my career in politics in Lambeth. The events of the 24th of January are clear. My actions are clear. I remain a member of the Lambeth community and I will continue to support my community. The events on Monday the 26th of February, which I refer to as my trial, was the most hostile, aggressive and humiliating environment I have ever encountered in my 10 years as a councillor. To that end, I no longer have any confidence in the leadership administration of Lambeth Council. She was put through the ringer for six hours by her own party in what sounds like a knockoff of the Spanish Inquisition because she voted for a ceasefire. This is Starmer's Labour, his party as he always calls it. So I'd better get to this Ramadan message now. We've been reminded of just where Labour remain, unmoved in effect. The insult and offence and disgust that Labour's pro-Israel without qualification attitude has caused to so many people across the country as Starmer decided, in his infinite wisdom, to tweet out, As Ramadan begins, sending my best wishes to Muslims in the UK and around the world. You make a tremendous contribution to our nation. At this time of prayer, reflection and charitable giving, I thank you and wish you the very best for this month. Ramadan Mubarak. Unless they're getting genocided in Gaza, presumably, or support a ceasefire here, and I've not even got to the accusations of institutional Islamophobia within the Labour Party that have been reported on officially, but that have never been acted upon. Starmer's Labour. Thanks coming from you after the shit you pulled in Israel's interest against Muslim people in Gaza, not all Muslim, of course, but the majority are. Well, this message has gone down exactly as well as it deserved because it has been ratioed to hell and back on Twitter. In other words, more comments made on it than it has been shared, which is a surefire sign of a tweet going down very, very badly. Of those shares, those retweets, a large proportion of them are quote tweets as well that are also attacking Starmer. So actually, it's even worse for him than the numbers first appear. At time of writing, he's had more than 4,000 comments on this post to just over 1,000 retweets. And as I say, a lot of them attack him too. Tory Fibs wrote, You back the switching off electricity and water to 2 million Muslims in Gaza. Sit down. Red Dave 74 wrote, How can you wish Muslims a happy Ramadan when you're supporting Israel? What a hypocrite you really are. This won't gain you votes. Five Pillars journalist Robert Carter wrote, your Ramadan message is not welcome. I speak for many Muslims when I say this tweet is considered insulting and offensive to us. Genocide enabler. And Mo Trades wrote, as a Muslim, my only prayer is that you retire from public office for the safety of Muslim families. They then followed this up with, give Galloway the job. These were amongst the more polite responses. The main Labour Party account itself is faring little, little better, having put out an even shorter 
frankly afterthought of a tweet than Starmer's was. All it says is, Ramadan Mubarak from everyone at the Labour Party, we wish you and your families a peaceful Ramadan. This is an account with a million followers and after 17 hours has fewer than 500 retweets, but more than twice as many comments, much in the same line that Starmer earned himself. For as long as he remains subservient to the whims of the Israel lobby, and he always will, he can't afford not to, Starmer will never be on the side of Muslim communities, and they are telling him just what they think of him. After the political stunts he has pulled in recent months, something like this is only going to disgust more and more people, Muslim and non-Muslim alike. Still, there are some people out there, outside of the Israel lobby, who like Starmer, and are apparently even oppressed by him such as being the endorsement he's won from former Trump strategist and star turn for the far right, Steve Bannon, which you can find out all about here on this video recommendation, and I'll, I'll hopefully catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks.